Well, welcome back to Onco Innovations Channel, a new hope in cancer therapy. And we have the pleasure of being joined by Dr. Mohammed and of course, Thomas, the CEO today, just to give us some insight uh, into the therapies and what's currently going on with the company. So first and foremost, welcome gentlemen. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure to get both of you on. So first and foremost, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Thomas, because you guys recently uplisted to a major exchange and then maybe perhaps you can introduce Dr. Mohammed for us as well. Absolutely, and first of all, uh, let me say, Kyle, it's great to see you. Uh, it's great to be back. Uh, I think we've been away for a week or so, uh, but we've been uh, quite busy. And so uh, the Uplist to SIBO, we're extremely thrilled. Uh, as we've talked about here before, uh, Onco Innovations is at a, a pitiful stage in our quest to tackle one of the biggest challenges of our time, and that's how to successfully treat and eventually uh, cure cancer. Um, to bring that change, to bring that uh, promise, uh, to bring that value to the clinic, uh, to the bedside, and most importantly, to, to patients. You know, SIBO um, uh, had a quote for me in their release this morning. Uh, it was a very nice release. They said some very nice things uh, about, uh, about Onco, about me. I said some very nice things about them as well. But they quoted me as saying that um, SIBO is more than a listing. It's a strategic alignment. And I, I do want to emphasize that point because we're all looking for tools to uh, broaden our reach to expand our network of global collaboration, and really accelerate our journey towards the future of transforming cancer therapy. And so today, um, I'm particularly thrilled that we have Dr. Islam Mohammed with us uh, to provide our viewers and our listeners with a bit more detail on that journey, and uh, specifically what Onco Innovations is doing to advance our research and development roadmap. And I'm really hopeful that we can accelerate that roadmap through our uplist to a tier one listing on SIBO. Um, let me credentialize Dr. Muhammad just a little bit because he deserves it. Um, and I affectionately call him Islam, um, but he's the chair of Onco's uh, scientific and, and clinical advisory board. He's a radiation oncologist uh, with BC Cancer and affiliated with the BC Cancer Research Institute. And in addition to his specialist practice, he's a clinical investigator in uh, lung cancer and stereotactic radiation. He's also a scientific advisor to uh, numerous biotech and uh, oncology companies. And so we're really pleased that he's brought his considerable talents uh, to the work we're doing here at Onco Innovations. And so with that, Kyle, I might just turn it back over to you and let the two of you have a short conversation about uh, what we're doing. Yeah, first and foremost, Dr. Muhammad, do you want to talk about what is the current challenges facing cancer therapies that uh, you guys are kind of working towards solving with the resistance of tumors to therapy? Yeah, but thank you very much for that introduction, Thomas, and uh, I appreciate that question. It's it's really the the central challenge of my entire practice. I've been practicing oncology now for about 25 years, and the challenge has always been uh, trying to deliver treatments, effective treatments like chemotherapy and radiation treatment, and at the same time being mindful of the toxicity of those treatments uh, when we try to treat these cancers. So both chemotherapy and radiation treatment frequently will mediate their therapeutic effect by causing DNA damage. And we exploit the fact that cancer cells really are poor at repairing that DNA damage, poor at detecting that DNA damage. And so that's what those chemotherapy and, and radiation treatments are intended to exploit is that difference between our normal tissues and cancer cells ability to repair DNA uh, damage. But at the same time, there are off-target effects, we call them, uh, where these drugs also have effects on our normal tissues. Um, and so this is really a central challenge is how do we administer these treatments safely? How do we enhance their effectiveness? How do we do it in a way that minimizes toxicity to the patient? Yeah, and speaking directly to those solutions, you want to talk a bit about your pipeline, MPA83 and PEO, PBCL, and kind of how they work? Sure. Those uh, those acronyms are a bit of a mouthful, but the, the full words are even more of a mouthful. Uh, so PNKP is polynucleotide kinase phosphatase. It's a, a key enzyme in DNA damage repair. Uh, many of the... Um, DNA damaging therapies that we use induce something called DNA strand breaks, where they actually interfere with the structure of the DNA molecule, and they cause breakage in that long chain, that long ladder of uh, base pairs that forms DNA. And PNKP 
assists in repairing those DNA strand breaks. So it's a really key enzyme in uh, the DNA damage repair pathway. Um, and it was first identified um, nearly simultaneously by labs, Canadian labs in Edmonton and, and Montreal. And the University of Alberta scientists have also developed an inhibitor to PNKP, and that's where Onco Innovations comes in. Um, this inhibitor um, is now packaged in a polymeric nanoparticle, that's the PEO PBCL. And by packaging this small molecule inhibitor of PNKP in a polymeric nanoparticle, uh, the scientists have been able to increase tumor accumulation of this compound, uh, reduce off-target effects, extend the duration that this compound is available in the body uh, for its action, um, and um, limit its elimination from the body. So these are all very important factors in uh, producing a new drug. And so Onco Innovations is partnering with these scientists in order to develop this NPA83, this nanoparticle encapsulated small molecule inhibitor to develop that into a drug and bring it to the clinic. So we've already seen um, that from preclinical testing, from laboratory testing of this compound in the encapsulated form, that it is effective at killing cancer cells, that it does so with minimal toxicity. It does so for a variety of cancer cells. And it seems also to enhance the effect of our standard cancer uh, therapies. Yeah, definitely appreciate the insight there. There seems to be a new class of therapy, but you want to talk about what is the therapeutic rationale and what is kind of unique about it? This is indeed a new class of therapy. So PNKP has never been targeted by any cancer therapy before. And the therapeutic rationale is twofold. So on the one hand, uh, you know, there, there are commonly um, tumor suppressor genes. Um, these are genes that normally protect our cells um, from transformation into a cancer. And many cancer cells on the, on the transformation path to becoming a cancer have deficiencies in these tumor suppressor genes. Well, this PNKP inhibitor can exploit those deficiencies in tumor suppressor genes and produce something called synthetic lethality. If these tumor suppressors are knocked out, along with um, knocking out the function of PNKP with this inhibitor, we enhance the, the cancer cell kill and produce synthetic lethality. Those cells cannot survive simply with the deficiency of specific tumor suppressor genes like PTEN or P10 and SHP-1 or SHP1. Um, these are very common tumor suppressor gene deficiencies. We see them in some of the worst cancers. We see them in glioblastoma multiforme, a brain tumor. Uh, we see it in pancreatic cancer. We see it in hormone resistant prostate cancer. We see it in triple negative breast cancer, uh, stage four ovarian cancer. These are nasty cancers. And there is a promise here that a PNKP inhibitor together when it's identified with these uh, tumor suppressor deficiencies can produce cell kill on its own. And the other thing that has been demonstrated is in the other form of the therapeutic rationale is that the PNKP inhibitor together with DNA damaging agents like certain chemotherapy drugs or with radiation can produce enhanced toxicity or uh, synergistic uh, uh, toxic effect. And we have seen that in preclinical models, again, in laboratory testing in live animals, that um, the combination of a PNKP inhibitor with radiation treatment with topoisomerase 1 inhibitors like arenotecan and topotecan, common chemotherapy drugs, with alkylating agents like temozolomide, can produce this synergistic effect and enhance the cell toxicity, cancer cell toxicity. Um, the other interesting thing is that we've been able to demonstrate these uh, lethal effects on cancer cells without any enhanced toxicity demonstrated in the laboratory animals. And so this is the promise that we want to explore further uh, with Onco Innovations developing this into a, a, a new drug. Yeah, and whether you're somebody in need of these kind of medicines or your investors, I wouldn't mind kind of getting a detailed next step in your R&D program and kind of what gets us into the clinics and into the bedsides. So it's a long process to, to move from the laboratory to the bedside and that clinical translation really is the focus of the company. 
Um, we are taking four pathways to get there uh, and we're, we're running them concurrently. So the first is we're continuing with our discovery path. We're partnering with the scientists at the University of Alberta to continue to expand our knowledge of the function of this inhibitor, the role it may play in different cancer types and other therapies that, uh, that this inhibitor may enhance. Uh, so that's one thing, discovery. The other is that we will be partnering with a manufacturer to develop scaled manufacture of this drug. Right now, the uh, to date, the scientists have developed kind of an artisanal manufacturing process, small batch manufacturing that wouldn't really be suitable for the purposes of developing it into a drug. Uh, but we are working with a, a manufacturing partner uh, to develop that into a scaled manufacturing process. Number three, uh, we're extending our preclinical testing in anticipation of an IND application, investigational new drug application. So we want to, of course, fulfill the requirements of an IND application on the road to clinical translation. And that means that we need to perform additional rodent and non-rodent testing. Um, that includes pharmacokinetic uh, and pharmacodynamic testing, uh, absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion testing, ADME testing. Um, additional genotoxicity and other toxicity assays as we escalate the dose further in these additional animal models. And number four is, of course, our clinical uh, trial program. So we have developed a, uh, an outline uh, proposal for a first in human study to use this compound as monotherapy. Uh, so not in combination with any other cancer treatments, but to use it in the setting of tumor suppressor deficient uh, malignancies, um, stage four malignancies that have failed other therapies. And we want to demonstrate both that the that this new compound is safe uh, and effective um, in this setting. So we want to, of course, focus on the safety of the drug and escalate the dose and find a maximum tolerated dose in this first in human study. And then that provides us a pathway to additional testing in specific cancer types, uh, potentially in combination with additional cancer treatments, such as chemotherapy and ionizing radiation. Well, on that note, I definitely appreciate all the insight and the both of you taking in, uh, your time today as we pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think and consider subscribing when News Catalyst hit the wire. We're gonna bring it to you here, but on that as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.